Hello everybody, and welcome to the first in a series of YouTube videos dedicated to teaching Android development. I hope that you find this video informational and useful, and continue to follow along as I release future videos on the IJ Apps channel. Eventually, you will get to learn to use cloud computing tools such as Firebase, Microsoft Azure, the Google Cloud Platform, and much more. We will also be still making our own apps, many of which I may have released on GitHub or the Google Play Store. So without further ado, let's dive into the ID we will be using, which is Android Studio. And in this video, I will show you how to navigate through Android Studio, how to create a project, and what exactly all the files and folders mean. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that you've already installed and Android Studio, successfully downloaded it and installed it. And now you're going to want to launch it. And once you do it, you'll come to this screen. So ignore the apps that you see on the left of my screen because I've already developed a few. But what we're interested in is what we see over here, where it says start a new Android Studio project. So we're going to click on that. Okay. And then that will take some time. Okay. And then it's come up. And for our application name, we're just going to say my first app. Okay. And the company, company domain is essentially kind of similar to a website domain. And it's used for determining your package name later. So later when you publish apps on the Google Play Store, your application will need to have a unique package name because that's how the Android operating system uses the package name. It uses it to determine if an application has already been installed on the device or not. So we can do something like your name.example.com. I've just done something else. And then uh, the package name, I mean, you don't shouldn't have to edit that. The package name is over here because it's already based off our app name and our company domain. And then if you're fine with the project location, you don't need to change that either, and I'm not going to. And regarding the language support over here, we're going to be developing it in Java. Later on, if you'd like to learn Kotlin, which is a very good language, and it's a uh, quickly growing language for Android development, you can include support or C++ support, but I'm not going to because this is going to be in Java. Okay, and then I'm going to press next. And now we um, now we see the target, uh, like now we see the devices we want to use. And this is going to be for phone and tablet. And we also see like the target Android devices, which is the API. So if you're confused about which one you want to use, you can click on help me choose. And it shows here which API is very popular. And then like which one, if you were to choose, uh, how many devices your app would be able to run on. And there are differences between the APIs. You can see some here. But if you're in more interested in to see uh, more details, you can head on over to the uh, Android developers page and they have a list of differences between the APIs. But for now, uh, we're just going to go with uh, Android, the Marshmallow one. So I'm going to click OK Marshmallow. And it'll um, allow the application to run on devices with an uh, API level of 23 or later. And then we're going to hit Next. And now we see an option to add an activity. An activity in Android is a page. And as you can see from the options, there are multiple different types over here. We're just going to go with the regular empty activity over here. And um, you can always add features to your empty activity to make it resemble one of the other activities shown over here. Um, but the reason that Android Studio provides these sorts of templates is so that it's faster to use. But our first app is going to be very basic and that's why the empty activity suits our needs. So we're going to go again and press next over here. And then usually the first um, name of the activity in an Android app is main activity. So that's fine. You don't have to change it unless you want to. And I'll describe what it's, the main activity is used for as well as this layout name where it says generate layout file. But that's about it. And we can hit finish. Okay. And this should take some time to run. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip over to the part where it's uh, done running. You can see here it's saying building the my first app Rachel product info. So uh, if you want, you can skip ahead. Uh, you, well, you don't need to skip ahead, but you can just wait and pause the video. So it's just about done for me. And you can see here it's launched Android Studio and it's showing some tips for me. I'm going to close that. And um, now what it's opened up is the uh, main activity.java file and the activity main.xml. I'm going to come to those later. But now I'm going to talk about like the apps folder on the left and the Gradle scripts and what you'll find them. So we'll start with the app. And in here you'll find the important um, uh, files such as the main activity of Java, which we see here, where we write the code to give the page usability. For example, we can detect when a user clicks a button through the code over here by linking an ID from the XML page to our Java page. 
and then setting some on-click listeners, and then we can carry out some actions. We can also see like what type of text they've entered and other things like that. And then underneath our res file over here, res stands for resources. We have multiple other folders. Our layout is the file where um, we define what our page looks like. And we can see we have activity main.xml, which is over here. Uh, it's taking a little time to run. But while that's going on, we also have over here drawable, where you can store images that you want to use in your Android app. And then we also have values where we store things such as strings and styles and colors. And in those, um, th that basically prevents redundancy. So what we can do in colors.xml is every time we want to refer to this color, and you can see the hex hexadecimal code over here, every time we want to refer to this specific color, instead of having to repeat this hexadecimal code, we can just say um, color and then set it to color primary. So that's one useful thing of the color for colors.xml. And it's similar for the other um, files and values, like strings and styles. And then talk about drawable, which is where you have your images, if you want to have those in your app. And then we have our layout file. So in our layout file, you can see this is under design mode. And the useful thing about this is you can just drag and drop stuff here. But I'm going to head on, head on over to text. And you can see here that this is what our um, first page on our app will look like. And over here, it's referring to the main activity and because that's the resource file that we're linking. This is the Java file that we're linking this resource file to. And if we come here, this is our activity over here, and you can tell it because it extends app compact activity. And we're setting our content view to this XML file, activity main. So this is where we define what the page will look like. And a text view is essentially just a block of a piece where we can have text. Another thing I like to add about this layout files is also where we uh, place our UI elements or user interactive elements. And they're also known as views. So you'll see text view. And if you head on over here, you see image, image view, recycler view, and a bunch of other views. And in the following tutorial, we'll be making some modifications to this basic app and have a text view and buttons. And we'll also be using toast and other things related to that. So now underneath app, we went to Java. We talked about like the main activity that Java file over here. And we also talked about resources, but there's also another important one, which is the Android manifest.xml, which every single application needs to have. And the reason that this is important is because it provides essential information about the application to the Android system. For example, this is where you state which activity will run when the app is launched. And that's done through over here where it says Android name, uh, Android at intent on category launcher. So that's what's going to be launching when the app is run. And it, this is also where we state what permissions we're going to have. For example, we can say um, permission, so uh, uses permission, and we can say something like camera, Android at permission to camera, and other things like that. So that's why the Android manifest file is um, important to our application. This is also where we specify the name of our app. And you can see here it says add string app name, which is under values. And once again, remember that's to make it so that it's less redundant. So we have this string called app name, and then we set it to my first app. And that's the name of our app when we launch it. And this is also like the default icon that you're going to be seeing at MipMap IC Launcher. So if you head on over to MipMap IC Launcher, there's a couple. And that's what our app's going to look like. You can change that by putting in your own images. Um, and I'll show you how to do that later as well in another video. But now let's head on over to the Gradle scripts which is another folder that we have here underneath the Android part over here. So Gradle scripts, and you can see here, uh, or here the main thing is build.gradle. So I'm gonna open the first one. This is the project level build.gradle and it's the highest level one. And what we find in the, uh, the highest level build.gradle is the build configurations that will be applied to all the modules in our projects. So uh, in the description of this video, I'll um, provide a link for more information about the Gradle. And this is the top level Gradle. And then we also have the module level Gradle, build.gradle file. And once again, um, this is where we can change our minimum SDK version. So like earlier, remember, if you remember, we had to specify that we wanted Marshmallow. If you wanted, you could change it here. But then what you'd have to do is like uh, do a Gradle sync. So I'm just gonna set it back to 23. Um, and then this is also where we can uh, implement like SDKs and APIs, such as the Microsoft Face API, or add other dependencies. And that's why this is called the dependencies over here. So th these are the, this is what the build.gradle file is used for.
And once again, if you want more information, you can find the link in the description of this video. So we've just covered essential files and folders in Android Studio that you will interact with regularly when you're developing your apps. Um, in the description of, uh, sorry, um, and uh, I hope you're able to find this video useful and that I gave you insight into using Android Studio. The last thing that we will do in this tutorial is set up our Android device so that we can install our apps APK on the device and that way we can also test it. So there is an option to use a virtual device, but I prefer to use an actual hardware device. Um, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wait for this to finish. If you head on over to this green arrow over here at the top of the screen and click it, this box should appear and it's saying initializing ADB. Okay. Um, and then you can see here I have my phone connected. I also have a virtual device, but as I mentioned earlier, I will be using my actual physical device. So um, now I'm going to open up the screen mirror. It's disconnected. I'm just going to reconnect it to my phone. Okay, now and now it's connected to my phone as you can see here and it's live. If you're curious, the app is called A Power Mirror and it's pretty useful. Um, but the thing, uh, an important thing to note is that before you can run your app on a physical device such as my phone over here, which is connected through via USB, you have to do something in your phone settings. So before I run that, I'm just going to go and show you what you have to do. So let's head on over to settings. So launch your um, the settings app on your Android device. It can be a tablet. And now go to about phone or about. Uh, it depends on um, what device you're using. Oops. Okay, so I'm just going to click there. About phone. And then you're going to see your model number over here. Uh, sorry, not model number. Android version. MIUI version. Sorry about that. So you see your MIUI version here. And what you're going to do is tap on it seven times. So I'm going to tap on it seven times. And as you can see, it says no need. You're already a developer. So for you guys, you may have to tap on it seven times if you do not already have this enabled. And now once that's done, it's basically going to tell you that you're a developer. And then we can go back. And in my phone, it's a phone by Xiaomi. To access developer settings, I have to go to uh, developer options. I have to go to additional settings. And then here, developer options. And now in order to send an app from your computer, from Android Studio, to a device via USB, you have to have an, a developer options enabled. And another thing that you have to have enabled is USB debugging. And this will allow your um, computer to send the APKs to your phone and launch it. So enable USB debugging. And if you have these, these options as well, install via USB and then allow granting permissions and simulating input. So have those three checked off and then you'll be good to go. And if you're having any issues, you can easily search this up online. And then uh, basically this is required to set up your phone. And now that that's done, I can go over here and click the run arrow. And then I'm going to select my device. And you can click this as well. Um, so if you've just um, connected your phone and then set up developer options, it may take a while for your phone to recognize your computer and vice versa. But once that's done, you can see here it says Gradle Build Running. And it will auto launch the app once you're done. And this will take a while. Um, for large apps that I've worked on, it's taken between two to three minutes. But in this case, it's a small app. It should take around a minute or less. Um, and one way to tell that it's nearly done is when it says installing APKs over here instead of Gradle World Running. And that signifies that it's just about to launch. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to the part where it's done. So if you want, you can go and pause the video. So it's just auto launched the application. And as you can see here, it says here, my first app, and you can see the color is blue, and it says hello world. In the following video, we'll just basically go and make changes to this. And we can easily change the text color and the text size and add buttons and other views, as I talked about, which are UI elements. We can also change the name of our app if we want to, or maybe not the name of the app, but at least what's displayed over here. And we can even change the color from uh, of this blue to maybe another color that we want. And this will be covered in the next video, so I hope you go and find that. And um, I hope you found this video useful and they gave you insight into how to use Android Studio for Android app development. Don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to get notified for future videos as eventually I plan on covering some fun and intriguing topics such as implementing Google Maps in your app or using Firebase's database 
as well as implementing machine learning models in your app. And I've actually done some projects with that, like weather prediction and facial recognition. So that's some pretty cool stuff that we can dive into. And if you know anybody else who would like to learn Android development, please share this video and channel with them. That way they too can learn. I'm also open to suggestions regarding concepts or topics that you want me to cover or apps that you would like me to demonstrate and make. And you can um, do that through the comments section of the video or through contacting me through ijapps101 at gmail.com. Once again, don't forget to like and subscribe to IJ Apps. Thanks for watching.